China set this year's economic growth target at around 5.5 percent. While the world economy has yet to fully recover from a prolonged pandemic, how realistic is the target, and what are the key challenges ahead? I talked to some top Chinese economists who are attending the two sessions in Beijing. First, let's meet Justin Ifulin, who once served as senior vice president and chief economist of the World Bank, and is now dean of the Institute for New Structural Economics at the Peking University. I think the 5.5 percent are wrong. Gross target is very realistic. As I often argue that. China has the potential to grow at eight percent from the technological possibility, but to realize the growth in reality, you also need to take into account domestic and global market situation. And when I propose that China this year can target. Around six percent. At that time, we did not have this geopolitical challenges in Russia and Ukraine, and not because of the challenges. The global economy certainly is affected adversely. How uh, exactly is actually the Russia-Ukraine? Crisis going to have an impact on the global economy, particularly on China's. Give me more details, please. Well, certainly, as you can see, the oil price surge up, and also the commodity prices also increase sharply. And certainly, China is a resources, you know, importing country that will affect China's cost of growth, and also that will affect other countries. And their economic growth rate may be adversely affected, and that will also, you know, have a negative impact on China's export this year. Now,、uh, there is also a, a lot of talk earlier about the transformation of the Chinese economy, depending more on domestic consumption. Do you see that transition is taking place? To what extent? And for the year 2022, where there are a lot of crises going on, how do you think that priority is likely to be placed among other priorities? Consumption certainly is very important because that is the purpose, goal of development. We want to improve people's living standards, and consumption is a very important dimension of that. But to make some consumption Growth possible. You need to raise people's income, and if you want to raise people's income, you need to increase labor productivity. How to increase labor productivity? You need to, you know, have a technological innovation and also industrial upgrading. But technological innovation and industrial upgrading all depends on investment. So. We should not say, you know, that China should change from investment that grows to consumption that grows. I think that we need to, you know, rely on domestic demand, and domestic demand has two components, and we should make the investment that to be effective in area which can raise labor productivity to increase labor income and consumption. The global economy has been suffering from the pandemic. China certainly felt the dampening effect of that. Now,、uh, China many wonder、uh, whether there is going to be a new negotiation about what the government's role might be and what the role of the market. At any situation, and at any stage of development, we need to have the market and the government to work together in an organic way. We cannot separate market and the state, and they have to work organically. But <clears throat> now the situation changes from time to time. When you need have some kind of external shock, or when you have some kind of business downturns, under the kind of situation, the government need to you know offset those kind of shocks or downturn. And at that time, certainly the government need to play. Uh, 
larger role than the private sectors. But overall, you need to have the market and the state to work together, and overall, the economic activities will be carried out by the private sectors. And the government role is just a facilitation role to allow the private sector to work more efficiently. The other thing, Professor Lin, of course, is about local government debts. Now, China's uh, fiscal infrastructure, or shall I say, between the central government and local government, quite different from many other economies. Now, uh, some have been suggesting, uh, if you look at the government work report, 1.5 trillion uh, transfer payment likely from the central level to the local governments, and it's likely to be a scale of uh, 9.8 trillion, an increase of 18 percent. Uh, it's the largest number in years. So how do you interpret all of these numbers? Local government debt is not unique to China. If you go to see other country, they also have local government debt. And the uniqueness of China's local government debt is that because according to our uh, uh, regulations, the local government cannot have a formal debt. And, but the local governments need to carry out many functions. And some of those functions related to, for example, counter-cyclical interventions, and also to provide some kind of public services, like a primary education and so on. And since they cannot have the official debt, and they rely on local government investment vehicles to borrow money from the commercial sectors. And uh, those kind of debt become implicit debt. So the uniqueness of China's local government debt is that the debt is in the form of implicit liability for the local government. But they are performing the government functions. And uh, with that understanding, I think many of the local government's functions you know, they should have the financial support. Since they cannot have the official debt, and under that kind of situation, to increase the central government transfer to local government to cover the cost for those kind of local government services. And those kind of services, you know, because they have the national implication, they should be covered by the tax, and especially central government tax revenue. So I think that and this year it moves in the right direction. But I think the best way to serve the local government, to solve the local government issue is that we should carefully study what kind of functions performed by the local government. In fact, they perform those kind of functions on behalf of the central government. Those kind of activity should be covered by the central government tax revenue instead of by the local government implicit debt. That's one thing. And secondly, local government invest in area which a long-term investment like infrastructure, and they, you know, they they it's a one-time large investment. And to make those kind of investment possible, certainly you will incur the short the debt when you make the investment and pay back that in the future either by tax revenue or by the revenues from the services of those kind of investment. And with that you should allow local government to have the deficit. And we need to change regulation. I think in the future, we should change our regulation, allow the local government to have the debt, and so they can issue local government bond to cover the long-term investment which is needed for the local development or local government service to the people. You heard from the finance minister, uh, Liu Kun, right after the National People's Congress uh, Government Work Report, 
he's been talking about, you know, there's more, of course, uh, funds coming from the central government for local governments and for key projects. However, he also mentioned the allocation of that has to be accurate because money is very important right now at a time when the global economy is not doing that well. How do you see that, Professor Lin, uh, that so-called accurate allocation of funds uh, from the central level to the local level? How is that likely being done? What is the process like in China? Well, certainly that, you know, it's a project basis. The local governments would have to propose what kind of project they want to do, and then we need to, you know, evaluate the project according to, you know, the laserability, according to the payback schedule, as I just discussed. And, 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 but here that, you know, this is one way to avoid the local government's wrongdoing, but at the same time, it also opens up some kind of, you know, way for the rent seeking and so on. I think that certainly, you know, it's, a, it's not a blank check that local government can sign and to borrow. They need to have some kind of you know, process to be you know, approved by the local you know, Congress. And uh, so also in this process, they need to have careful evaluation of the purpose of those kind of debt and, uh, and also need to carefully study you know, what kind of arrangement you're going to pay back your kind of debt.